Welcome to another edition, another installment of Three Thinkers Fractional Friday. Today, as you can see, consistent with the theme of it being a Fractional Friday, we've only got two of the thinkers today. Myself, Kevin, and Erkan, who has been gracious enough to join us while he's on vacation. That's how that's how dedicated he is to Three Thinkers, is he's willing to come on during vacation and uh, chat it up about a you know given topic. So what are we talking about this week? Maybe you could fill people in a little bit. Well, we're talking about the recent developments at um, the uh, the university, Ham Hamlin University, right? I think it's Hamline, yeah. Hamlin, yeah. Hamlin. Hamlin, yeah, Hamlin. I'm not sure how you pronounce it, Hamlin, right? But um, yeah, Hamlin University professor who was uh, um, suspended for um, uh, showing a, an image of the Prophet Muhammad. And let me jump in real quick. What, what? So let's start it up. There's there's a famous painting from the 12th century of uh, the the is it the of Gabriel and Muhammad, right? The, is it the archang arch archangel Muhammad of mm -hmm. uh, uh, Gabriel with the Prophet Muhammad? And this is a painting that has been a historic painting. It's been taught and and shown in class religious classes all over the globe even in many muslim countries and the professor in question named erica erica um, lopez prater had actually prefaced showing the the image by saying hey this is a historic painting it has a lot of um cultural significance and when she showed the uh the image which again is a painting that was commissioned by a Sunni king in the 12th century. And it's a historic painting in many, uh, you know, for, for many Muslims. Um, one of the Muslim students in class objected. And after the class was over, the university came to the defense of, this, of the Muslim student and said, this was an example of Islamophobia and this adjunct professor. And we should, we should explain that in the US, an adjunct professor is a part-time instructor, part-time professor, they don't have tenure. And, and this professor was, uh, was, was fired. And there's been many things that have happened since then uh, to fast forward a little bit, and then we're gonna, gonna rewind. The uh, professor, the now fired adjunct professor, Erica Lopez Prater, has now sued. And the university has backtracked and said, well, Islamophobic was the wrong terminology. We should not let academic freedom, uh, the feelings of one student, supersede uh, academic freedom. And I, I think what's disturbing about this uh, is that this is a historic painting. Right. This is not. This is not an attempt. This is not a modern painting, where the people are setting out to inflame tensions. It's not a Danish. It's not a Danish cartoon. It's not the Danish cartoon. This is a 12th century painting, commissioned by a Sunni king, uh, and, and and the, I mean, it's just maybe you could take it from here. What what are your thoughts? Well, I think. <laughs> Like you said, it's not a deliberate attempt to hurt anybody's feelings or, you know, to denigrate the religion or this, that, or the other. It is, it was, it was, it was included for educational purposes on a course about history. Um, and she, the, the, the professor in question, uh, I'm trying not to say her name to me, but I mean, her name is out there anyway, right? So, yeah, yeah. I just wanted to include it. So she's like not nameless, you know. Yeah. Okay. I mean, I yeah. Okay. Anyway, she 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 prefaced it with she gave people a chance uh, to either leave the room or make objections, and <clears throat> when and so she, there was like a two minute 
the spell where she explained what she was going to do and blah, blah, blah. And it was all for educational purposes. And yet, and yet, there was one bad faith actor in the group, in the group, in the, in the lecture theatre who took offence, right? A cry bully, basically. I mean, this makes me think that, it, I mean, I read in an article on, a, I think it was on Spiked, uh, a British publication, um, that um, this has become kind of Muslim identity. It's become a, uh, an issue within kind of Muslim identity politics, basically, which is a kind of, it's a red button, right? I mean, it's long been acknowledged that, you know, Mohammed is a red line, but now it's a red button. Right. And if I want to cancel you, if I want to shut you up, if I want to scare other people, I just touch that button. Right. And this is I just push that button and I get you ejected like one of the henchmen who sits with the bad guy in James Bond. Just, you know, the ejector seat, you say bye bye. And you're just ejected from the meeting or something or you're electrocuted. And anyway, it's a bit like that, really. You know, it's just this kind of. Um, this means by which people can scare, you, can cancel you, shut others up, scare others, you know, um, uh, scare the horses, as it were. Um, and it's just a really effective way of, 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 of silencing people about a painting, as you say, that was not like deliberately intended to offend anybody. It was just, it was just displayed for educational purposes for a discussion. But this is this is this is what happens when you when we start um, when we start privileging kind of subjective, you know, oh this hurts my feeling. Well, get over yourself. You know, I'm 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 offended by all kinds of things on a daily basis. But do we really want to go down that rabbit hole? Do we really want to go on that slippery slope and start? I mean, that's a good, that's a you know, that's a that's a great way to. That's a great way to get involved in a kind of race to the bottom, right? For everybody's rights and expression and free thought. And... Yeah, and, and this is a painting that was created long before our modern culture of like, kind of like, of like this, this is a painting created before an era where you go out of your way not to inflame or antagonize people and it's almost as if my feelings matter more than historical context matter more than the the nuances and, and the the uh the environment in which this piece of art was created it's like it none of that matters only thing that matters is my feeling are my feelings in 2023, even though this is an actual historic painting related to the religion, right? Mm -hmm. So um yeah, context is everything. And that's one aspect of the context, how it was created. And the other, the the or at least one other kind of contextual uh sig contextually significant factor is that it was it was it was it was displayed. In a in an educational environment, right? In a in a, in, a, in a university in that kind of setting, and um, so we can talk about context. We can talk about the context of production. We can talk about the context of uh, uh, display. You know, <clears throat> well, we can also talk about how instead of this university trying to foster an environment of of discussion and debate. They they went the path of silencing the professor in question, right? They they ended all debate, and that's the th that's why some of this modern censorship built around someone having their feelings hurt or the, being offended in some way. It's it, it it's it's one thing if it leads to some sort of debate or discussion, but this costs people their lives, their livelihoods, their professions. I I'm mean the ripple of yeah the, yeah and the, the ripple effect is huge i mean if you if you you whether it's like someone who's 
secular PC or a religious zealot, you should not, if you're a teacher and you're teaching with historic context and you're giving a preface to something that you were like, all right, here's what this is about. This is when it co- where it comes from. All right, you know, I just want to let all of you know before I show you, if, if, if that's not enough, then you don't really have an environment of in, in, in the academic setting of of, no. of a free debate of the ideas. University, yeah, the university, I mean, congratulations to Hamlin at that point. You just became a church. I mean, you just became, I mean, it, you know, you became a, a cult uh, you know, or, a, or a church of some kind, right? I mean, where, where, where you know, you're not an educational uh, institution anymore. You, you're some kind of, you're some other kind of institution that cares more about the personal feelings of one bad faith actor who really is just, they're just, it's, it's deliberate. It's, it's, it's this, they realize that they have the power to, to, they, they realize that, 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 that people are gonna, they're gonna bow down because it's standpoint theory, it's critical, it's, you know, because rather, rather oddly, there is an Islamic strand to critical race theory, right? Uh, because of course, you know, people of color they they've been oppressed, right? This is this is the narrative, and so that there's a, there's an unquestioned kind of um, uh, acceptance that that you know black and brown um, are together against this white oppressive kind of system, and so yeah. Anyway, it's 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 it, it, it comes back to that kind of um, that kind of critical race, I think it's it's to do with critical race theory. Really. So, well, I, 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 what I like to point out is that, I mean, we're talking about a faith that is practiced from, you know, from the U.S. to Indonesia to multiple countries in Africa to the Middle East to Central mm-hmm. Asia. I mean, all around the world. I mean, and and the and, and Islam is practiced within the cultural context of many countries to have very different histories and it, and to treat one student as if they are some sort of voice on what is islamophobic and what is acceptable and what is not it, it goes back to a lot of the censorship treats groups as if they're one big monolith right they're one big monolith so this one person represents all these people who really you know, there's there's all sorts of opinions within any religion, right? I mean, within Christianity, within Islam, y- you have many different opinions. So, uh, maybe you including could... including people who don't want to be in the religion yeah. at all, right. but they they but there's one of the things that holds people that uh, to ransom in a way is is that they they're too scared, they're too frightened because they would lose. I mean apart from being physically attacked in many cases and and bullied and they would lose social ties it's one of the things that makes people you know if if look i mean i was as you know i was myself i was born muslim right and i i'm not a muslim anymore for any any muslims watching this uh <laughs> you know um um i was i was one of the lucky ones i i didn't i did, i i i it wasn't forced on me in any way. And I wasn't, you know, uh, my parents were not devout, you know, they loved me more than they loved Mohammed. And um, so, um, yeah, I mean, some people can get out of it and that's a kind of, that's a privilege, that's a luxury. Many, many people out there, like 90 something percentile, they have no choice, right? Because if they do, they'll lose everything. Like social, so you know, social, uh, um, social networks, uh, you know, we're social animals, human beings. We need people around us. We need families. We need relationships. We need togetherness. We need that groupiness. And I think one of the reasons, it's a kind of, um, I think Seth Andrews calls it, um, uh, he calls it uh, Stockholm Syndrome for kinder- kindergartens, right? This is what religion is. And it, it keeps people in those relationships and makes them not, you know, not stick their head above the parapet, basically. I I remember I I I went out with a, a Moroccan woman, and she was telling me how 
her parents, when when she was a younger child, they were very religious. And then her mom went on the Hajj to Mecca and had such a bad experience that she didn't want to be, she wasn't Muslim anymore. So, but she was telling me how when they would go see family, that their parents, it was a big secret. They couldn't tell their family, hey, we're not, we don't believe this anymore. So they would just pretend when it was prayer time, they would just, they would just go along with it and pretend to pray. And yeah, I mean, they obviously, that's an example of what you're talking about. Like you have people that don't really believe, but they don't want to lose their family. I mean, even though their family members are still believers, so they just mm-hmm. go along with it, right? Out of fear or out of just maybe just social isolation. Um, and yeah, because if they if they dissent, they'll lose everything. I mean, apart from being maybe physically attacked, as I've said, it's 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 a fate worse than death in a way because you on you're on your own. Like you'll just be, you know, you'll just be rejected, and that and that's that. You, you know, you, you won't have those. We won't have those social ties that we need as human beings. Like we need support networks and so on. You'll lose all that. Maybe you can mention, you know, we we, we both read before this uh, this podcast uh, a piece by a, a Muslim academic. And I don't know if you'd be willing to uh, share some of the things you learned in that piece. Oh, you mean the one I was the one I just I just shared it on the screen. You mean the one I just shared? Yeah, you mean one? Yeah, she's a Muslim, uh, Amna Khalid. Yeah, and she wrote this. Um, and she, yeah, as a as a Muslim, but sorry, most of all, I am offended as a Muslim. Yeah. So she wrote this from the Muslim point of view, right? I mean, or not the Muslim, but from her point of view as a Muslim, right? Um, so yeah, she wrote this piece as. Uh, in opposition, actually, to the decision uh, so so to, so um so what I mean, like, what was her main from what you remember, what was her, some of her main objections to the firing of this professor at Hamline? I think well, it was to do with um well, the educational side of things that was you know that's what she was really talking about um. Um, she also um, she was also saying that she was also raising the point that we've raised about you know, the main thing that she was saying is that you know why does the extreme the extreme sort of opinion override uh, the opinions of more moderate more moderate Muslims who don't see a problem with who can who can see the uh, the educational significance of a painting such as this, and they can see that this is as you said it's it's a painting that is centuries old, um, and so she yeah she was she's calling for the reinstatement of the um, of the professor who was fired. I think she was also really disturbed that that the university just threw the professor under the bus, right? That they fired her, that they said she was Islamophobic. And I I think there's, it gets back to like a lot of these situations of kind of like knee-jerk censorship where it really is a vocal minority who are robbing people of their livelihoods and destroying reputations. Yeah. Um, and actually, you know, I wanted to, we can go to like real quick to your background, if we could delve into that a little bit and like, you know, what, because I think it's important to say that, you know, Erkan, you know, is a learned academic and he has actually read a lot of uh, religious, uh, well, maybe you could elaborate on kind of your background and like, yeah, well, I, how, your, your opinion. Yeah, well, I, I'm, yeah, I mean, I, I have read a lot on the sociology of religion, particularly. Um, and that includes, obviously, that includes scripture. I've read, you know, I've read pretty much everything there is to read um, from the Old Testament, New Testament, all of the Quran, uh, much of the Hadith, which is which math, it is massive, but I've read quite a lot of it um, as part of my studies. I've read the opinions of ex-Muslims, current Muslims, um, uh, 
you know, um, dissidents, uh, you know, uh, men, women. And so, yeah, I mean, there's a lot to, as you said before, there are many perspectives and, and it's not a monolith um, uh, in terms of people's um, opinions on it, right? Because like any religion, um, but by the same rule, if you actually go back to the original, if you go back to the original Quran and mm -hmm. some of the, and if you really, if you read some of the authorities on, like from, you know, the, the authoritative kind of interpretations and things of that nature from um, Muslim clerics and so on, um, it's not quite as, as, you know, Islam hasn't had a reformation, for example, and it's not quite as uh, uh, permissive as, as some people would have you believe. I mean, some people, I, I my take is that some people um, try to represent Islam as if it's kind of a bit like Christianity and people have different opinions on it. But if you actually go to the scriptures and, like I said, to the, to the really authoritative uh, Islamic interpretations and current Muslim scholars and mo Muslim scholars of the past, what you find is a very strict, generally speaking, a generally strict interpretation of the faith. Not like, oh yeah, it's up for grabs, right? But we, I think what we do is we project a Western kind of perspective on, on a religion. And it comes back to, uh, to me, it comes back to the basic fact that we don't understand. Many people just don't understand Islam. Whether it's, whether they have good things to say about it or whether they have bad things to say about it, they, we, generally speaking, we just don't understand Islam. And I think you made the point before we went live I would venture that many religious people, not just Muslims, but many religious people really don't know that much themselves about their, their own their own faith. Well, I mean, we I, I don't know if you're done with the article or not, um, but uh, I don't know. Is there any more you want to share? For, uh, or... Sorry, I'll get rid of that. All right. yeah. um, so, but no, so... I mean, this is the thing about all religions. What I think about, because I'm not religious and I've never, I mean, I went through periods in my life where I was curious about religion, but I never, I mean, I never felt the Holy Spirit. I never felt the urge to speak in, to speak in tongues. Um, but my big thing is, and, and this is something we could explore, right? What percentage of people, whether it's Christians, what percentage of Christians have read the, the Bible front to back, right? like sat down and how what percentage of you know what percentage of muslims have read the quran front to back and got deep into study i mean i don't know either one. i don't know the answer to either one um but i think there's especially i think especially in western societies i think there's people that are not that are not as invested in the academic or or the theological side of their religion and that's just that's just my speculation um and and i know there are parts of the middle east where you have to memorize the quran when you're a little kid so i know there are people who who read it front to back and their you know their their study of islam is deep but again that this is the thing it's like with this painting that we talked about um in the hemline controversy this is this is a muslim piece of art this is from a muslim society that made this painting it's a historic muslim painting it was not a painting made you know by some king in england to mock islam it was made by during the, cru during the yeah, crusades yeah it wasn't during the crusades mm -hmm. and they're like look let's make fun of islam and let's make this painting and have a big joke it was it was a historic piece of work from Islamic intellectuals, so and Islamic artists. So to me, what it what it signals to me is a kind of a, a kind of privilege, actually. This is a, a buzzword, isn't it, today? And it's a kind of privilege where it's like it doesn't matter doesn't matter what the purpose is, hands off, hands off this stuff, right? Um, you know, and Muslims are free to say whatever they like about America, about Britain, about white people, about blah, blah. Muslims are free to say whatever they like about anything. 
But then as soon as an, edu as, as an educator shows a painting in a lecture, oh, you know, terrible person, right? You know, I, and again, funny. and again, it, it, like the, if, if it's a, if a true, a true, a, an academic institution that respects academic freedom and values debate and intellectual jousting would welcome a discussion in that situation, would foster an environment where, hey, we you were offended, but guess what? <clears throat> this is a place of learning. You're not always going to hear or see things you like. And this is a place of debate and intellectual rigor. This is not a place where just because 10% or 1% are offended, hey, we're going to, you know, we're going to totally censor our, our lessons. I mean, again, it'd be different in an academic setting if the professor had been like, hey, I've got some surprises for you today. We got some great artwork and then showed the Danish cartoons, no warning, mm -hmm. just throws mm -hmm. them up and like, let's, mm -hmm. let's talk about why these cartoons are so cool. That would be a different scenario. But what's again, what's disturbing is that that this professor literally laid out, prefaced, mm -hmm. prefaced, had the state state of for mind. Two minutes. But for yeah, no for less two minutes. For no fewer. For no fewer than two minutes. Yeah, I heard. Yeah. And so I, I just but I mean, and there's another word too. It's like such as I was saying didn't make me feel comfortable, right? I mean it is literally impossible to go through life and not feel a little uncomfortable sometimes. Impossible. I mean, I, 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 I've been feeling uncomfortable my whole life. I, I can't even remember the last time I felt comfortable, you know? Yeah, so that's what life's about, right? I mean, um, you know, so that's kind of, I don't know if you have some final thoughts just based on um, your perspective as an educator, as an academic, as an intellectual. Well, it's, it's concerning. I mean, this is why we have, you know, the new University of Austin, right, uh, setting up, and people are running. People are running scared. People are running away from academia because this is what is happening. It is being, it's being. Everything's being. Everything's being flattened. Like everything is just. Um, we're all becoming quasi-religious now. We, we might as well be, right? Even if you're an atheist, even if you, and you know, even something like. Uh, Something like um, even trigger warnings, like I don't even agree. Trigger warnings, like what are you doing at university in the first place? If you if you're troubled by how was how did somebody become qualified to be a surgeon, for instance, or you know did they did they dissect things? Or how did you be, how did people you you know a biologist or a zoologist? How do these people become? Do they have to cut things open like little animals and things? Do you have to be confronted with? you know, um, uh, nasty, horrible things. And it's the same, it's the, it, it's the same with, in fact, it's, I think it's even, it's even less impactful when it comes to words, because if you can't handle, if you, if you can't handle a few words or a painting, right, you know, like I said, think about how someone like a biologist becomes a biologist, you know, working the practical exercises in the laboratory or whatever they do, I don't know what they do, one guesses that that's probably part of it um, uh, to get to know anatomy or something like that. I mean, but in the in the discursive disciplines, all this kind of all this kind of this this yeah this reverence of kind of like language and um, I mean, what's all this? It's it is quasi religious, you know. I well, think, and you think about on a small scale, if every time someone is uncomfortable with an important topic in class or a historical, uh, a, a, a conversation about something that's historical, if every time there's a risk of someone not liking it, we shut down debate. I mean, that is a form of not nonviolent suppression, suppression of speech, suppression of ideas. Cry bullets. Yeah, right. cry bullets. I mean, I like it's um, not done, it's not done through the, through a gun or a bayonet, but it's done through other means. And every time that happens, you, you stifle you burn in a, a, you, you, you burn you in a book. There's more than that way to burn a book, right? Yeah. I mean, you, you essentially you're stifling intellectual growth. I mean, that's another, I'm just, you know, like riffing here, but how it 
if you can't see historical things that don't fit in with your modern view, how can you grow intellectually? How can you understand the present and even your own culture? Let's say if you are looking at religious painting that has centuries of relevance to the history of your religion, how can you grow as a person or grow in your understanding in the history of your religion if you're willing to get someone fired mm. for showing you said historic painting? It's a power game. It's just yeah. that's what I mean. It's just purely a power game. It's nothing to do with the painting. The 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 Muslim who was allegedly offended probably <sighs> wasn't offended. It's just I can I can get you. I want to see what will happen if I make a complaint. I want to see all of these all of these kind of you know probably probably mostly white people um, you know on the prostrate on the floor begging for forgiveness. This is what I want to see. So I'm gonna file a complaint and get this individual fired. It's what it is. It's a turning. It's what Brett Weinstein called the turning of the tables of oppression, right? Well, and again, it's like, I, I think whether it's a publishing house or a, a academic setting, people have to be willing to lose some money to gain some credibility in the long run, right? You have to be willing... Maybe you lose a student or two who withdraws because they're offended by a painting. You give in to people like this. At, at some point, you're not going to have a staff. You know, you're not going to have any real intellectual debate or discussion. One thing that I wanted to direct viewers and listening listeners to is that the Fire website, F I R E, Fire, uh, run by Greg Lucchiano, um, they. Also, um, they also published this article detailing this incident at, at Hamlin University, and they also have a um, yeah, oh yeah, she's named there, yeah, of course, Erica Lopez Prata, as you said, yeah, and they have a um, they, they they have a you can write you can write a letter. Um, they have a click. They have a, a link that you can click on, and you can you can um, file a complaint to get and in you know to get this professor reinstated. So this is I think this is a good, also a good. I think there needs to be a kind of critical mass of people who can maybe um, yeah uh, uh, complain about this because I think it's. It is it is detrimental to the whole purpose of I mean, like you said, why why bother going to a university if you if you, if offense is gonna just shut everything down and there's no nuance and there's no conversation? I mean, what's the point of it, right? Yeah, I mean, we could. I think this is definitely a topic that we'll 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 uh, discuss again. I want to let everyone know that we will have links. Uh, related to this topic in the description below. And I hope you guys have enjoyed our conversation. And I hope if you're a big fan of uh, intellectual freedom and free of academic freedom and just, uh, you know, freedom of discussion, freedom of debate, I hope you'll give us a big uh, like and uh, subscribe yeah. to our channel. And, uh, so And check out the articles as well. And uh, yeah, and maybe send a letter of complaint uh, via the fire article as many people as possible should do that you know what thanks for joining us on vacation Erkan. i mean you yeah. know i actually I, <laughs> I i i i called the guy today and i i didn't i, I didn't really realize he was on vacation but i appreciate you coming on with us and uh sorry for waking you up oh no it's fine um i'm sorry if i was a little bit yeah i'm sorry if i was a little bit kind of slow today but yeah it's fine I'm on, right. I'm in vacation mode for sure. All right. All right. Thanks. It was great. Cheers, Kevin. See you. Bye. Bye.